advocate Busisiwe Mkwebane. She has gone against Parliament's advice not to release audio recordings to prove her extortion claims. There are now mounting concerns about the credibility of the inquiry probing her fitness to hold office. Mkwebane wants the chairperson of the Section 194 Committee, Richard Gyanki, to recuse himself. She says Gyanki, ANC Chief Whip, Pemi Majodina, and the late Tina Jamat Peterson demanded money to influence the outcomes of the inquiry. We're now joined by Dr. Zamo Mbandwa, a political analyst. Thank you very much, sir, for your time this afternoon. So, Doc, um, you've had a couple of hours to reflect um, on all of the happenings of yesterday. And you are thinking what at this hour? Good afternoon, Dudu, and good afternoon to the viewers at home. Well, indeed, uh, this is a very important topic to talk about, especially uh, today and uh, something that uh, people have been talking about in various platforms, which include the social media as well. Well, I want us to have a look at um, the Office of the Public Protector itself. I think the Office of the Public Protector has been hijacked by, by politicians. Um, and it is used by, by politicians in different factions, particularly of the ANC. I'm saying this primarily because when, when the current public protector was suspended uh, in last year, uh, June, the High Court in September ruled that the suspension was unlawful. Uh, but because uh, the, the leadership in government had a specific agenda, they continued with, uh, with the suspension even after uh, the, the Western Cape High Court have, have already made a ruling. So that is why I'm saying this, is a, this office is highly politicized. And also, the, the recommendation that was made by, by the, the judge of the Western Cape High Court was that the suspension there, there is not an urgent suspension. And, um, and, and uh, the, the judge said it's because the president was being investigated by, by the public protector. Now, fast forward to what has happened recently. The issue of uh, the, the chairperson of, um, of, uh, of, the, of the inquiry commission uh, is also a problem because if then you are, uh, you are actually accused of actually looking for a bribe, even if you know you are clean, you need to step aside and allow people whose name are not tainted so that you can be able to, uh, so, so, so that you can be able to allow the process to unfold um, uh, properly. So that's where the problem is. And also, to, to what is alarming me is that the current public protector was actually appointed in 2016. And according to our laws in South Africa, the Constitution, uh, as the Chapter 9 uh, institution, the term of office is seven years uh, and not renewable. And the term of office of the current public protector ended last year. If you count from 2016 to 2022, it's, it's seven years. And already, the ad hoc committee of parliament have already issued a call for the organizations and for South Africans to, uh, to, to give nominations or to nominate uh, the potential candidates for the office of the public protector. Now, all this process of the inquiry, for me, I think it's fruitless and it's wasteful expenditure because regardless of the finding of the commission, it's not going to serve any purpose for the country because the current public protector is no longer, is no longer uh, legible to, to be in office because they have already issued a call and up until 7 July for, 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 for people to, uh, to provide names sure. or to make nominations. Dr. So for me, I think it's just a wasteful exercise. Okay. Dr. Mbanja, I'd like for us to take a look, listen at the opening words of uh, the public protector's statement yesterday. Let's take a look, listen at this. Um, but the courts are with Ramaphosa. The courts are with Ramaphosa. These are the chilling last words uttered and contained in the voice recording of some of the remarks made by the late Honorable Tina Jumat Peterson in one of her two physical meetings with my husband at the Ocean Basket Restaurant in Ogartambo International Airport. 
The public protector went further to say the late Tina Jamar Peterson would still be alive if the legislature, the executive and the judiciary as well as the ANC-DA alliance had complied with their constitutional obligations. In a way, all of these institutions killed Ms. Jamat Peterson. I'd like for us to focus on the opening words of but the courts are with Ramaphosa. Then she goes on to point at the legislature, the executive and the judiciary. What did you walk away um, understanding after that? You see, uh, well, what she's saying is, is very true, but what becomes more problematic as well is that, uh, you, of course, the president is, is in charge, but what becomes more problematic is that the, you remember the, the inquiry uh, of Palapala, where, where, where the parliament said, no, there's no need to continue the inquiry. So it's very difficult for a president now to take an objective, uh, an objective uh, decision on this particular matter. And again, regardless of the outcome of the, of the commission, of the inquiry commission, it will not be seen as an objective decision or as an ethical decision out of all these things that are happening. Because one, if we refer back to the High Court decision of the Western Cape, the president was not supposed to suspend the public protector because the, the motive behind suspending the public protector was based on the inquiry or investigation of the Palapala farm. Now, and, and also, um, the inquiry now, the one, Section 194 inquiry, is also affected simply because the, the chairperson is also accused or alleged to, um, to have solicited a bribe from, from the husband of the public protector. Now, you, you know, it's very difficult for for us to believe that uh, the commission or the inquiry commission and the president will take a decision that will actually um, say, say, actually see um, the process that is fair because they are also affected by, by this process. It was going to be better if uh, everything was handled by people who are not um, uh, actually uh, part of the process or people that are not uh, actually uh, affected, their names are not affected. Because number one, uh, Mr. Janji is also affected now based on what the public protector said yesterday. Number two, the president is also affected because the High Court of last year, the, the decision of the High Court last year, indicated that the motive behind the suspension of the public protector was on the basis of uh, the Palapala inquiry. So all these individuals are highly um, uh, conflicted. So it becomes very difficult for us now as citizens to believe that whatever decision that they are making is credible and fair. But it doesn't take away uh, the fact that uh, maybe the suspensions are credible, maybe they have uh, strong views and strong uh, legal uh, background to suspend the public protector, but under the circumstances, it's very difficult to believe that whatever whatever reason they suspended the hair for are valid and legally sound, and also the outcome now of the inquiry commission and the, the decision that will be taken by the president will be questionable under the current circumstances. Dr. Zamo Mbandra is a political analyst. Thank you very much for your time.